And another thing you do too, and this is, I thought this was cool. I know people would like to do this, but you have a Twitch channel and you actually do some live streaming of your digital art. You do, you, you schedule them ahead of time, right? Uh, yeah, that's something I started doing a month ago where it's like, okay, I, I really want something steady. So I just pick Wednesdays just cause, uh, often there are other things going on and I figure Wednesdays are open to, you know, like most people don't really have a lot of things going on. Right. So just trying to find a slot where I'm likely to pick up more of an audience that way. Um, but it creates like a fixed time slot where I'm also working on artwork and, you know, as long as you're working, you might as well turn it into content. So I Twitch stream and then I pull the highlights and create a YouTube video out of that and upload it to my YouTube channel. Uh, so that's, Right. Just thinking about the process, like I'm very systems oriented. So, you know, like to the next thing, to the next thing, to leads to the next thing and just try to make it run. Yeah. I know some people who have done the live drawing thing, but a lot of it will be, um, they'll just have a phone on them while, you know, they're drawing on the canvas, mm -hmm. but yours is actually working digitally. You've done, I, from what I've seen, it looks like you go for about two, two and a half hours. Yeah. And, and you've been doing, uh, one of the things that you've been doing, and I'd like to know more about this is you've been showing demonstrations of, uh, digital art that you're doing, which is black and white to color photography or like, yeah. what is that series that you're doing? Uh, so that's, uh, it's really, I'm just working on a particular piece and those are the techniques that I'm trying out. So that, that piece started as a, as an online course actually. Um, so there was a particular process he was working with there. And this is a process a lot of digital artists go through where, you know, they will uh, create like a solid black, like a fully rendered black and white under layer and then tint colors on top of them, paint on top of that. Uh, so it's, it's one of those things where I'm experimenting with to see like how well it fits with me. Like I've, I've never really enjoyed that process quite as much just because the way the tints work, like I, I never feel like it's the color I want or I'm going for. And I'm used to just like mixing the colors I want, pick that up and then put it right where I want it. You know, explain to me what you mean by the, the tint process. Like I, I was looking at it and mm -hmm. there was, you know, it, first of all, the way it's set up, you have like a grid of, of drawings and then there's some, yeah. And then on the right, there's the color scale. Yeah, so I'm assuming so, this is what you mean by the tint, but explain to me more about, cause I, I watched it or I watched some of it because we were getting ready to, <laughs> to gotcha. talk. And so I couldn't see the whole thing. So I'm curious to know what that, that full process is. Plus no, nobody else listening to this watched it. So they would like to yeah, know. Of course. There you go. <laughs> so the way I'd, I'd set that up was I did my full uh, black and white render of the, uh, of the illustration and then set up different fair, like, plots where I can create variations of color palette. So I just pick and choose colors and paint over the top of it. And within Photoshop, uh, you can put different layers on top of things and change the opacity and the blending mode, which affects how light passes through the layer mm -hmm. to affect the layer below it. And it's a quick and easy way to uh, just drop in different colors and see how they look and feel uh, next to each other. So in that part of the video, I demonstrate um, just you know how I grab these random color palettes, apply them to my illustration, and then I'll go through each of those variations and pick out the one that I like to, you know, add to the final composition. Yeah. And the, uh, the process for that, I just found it so fascinating when I was watching it. And then at the, the next thing I wanted to know too, was like the drawing you're working on. I'm like, is that one of your drawings and you did it in black and white and now you're coloring it? Like that was the other process that I wanted to know about, like our, are you actually putting it out that way or is that your process for coloring digital art or all that kind of stuff? Yeah. I mean, the final piece that I would upload to my website, my portfolio will be fully painted, rendered in color. Mm -hmm. um, but part of the process is you going through those, um, those monochrome steps uh, just so you can, uh, you know, you can try out different things and experiment as you go and figure out, the right things uh, before you actually get to finally painting it. Cause you know, there's nothing worse than <laughs> spending tens of hours painting a, a piece just to realize the color palette's not working, you know? Mm 